Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Simple Man Podcast. My name is Brody. Before we get started today, I just want to let you know that rule number one of this podcast is we do not slander Grogu. He is our pride and joy, our little sweet baby boy, and we do not slander him. And I have been absolutely on the front lines defending Grogu. (laughs) There's been so much slander about Grogu and... um, It's really taking a toll on me, if I'm being honest. (laughs) Um, Nah, it's it's funny, though. Uh, I hope you guys had a good week and um, have enjoyed the new awesome episodes of Star Wars, The uh, the Mandalorian, and The Bad Batch. And um, no, it's been interesting dealing with, um, you know, people's reception to the new content, as it always is, but... I don't know. I feel like people have reached their um, turning point with The Mandalorian in a lot of ways. I've seen a lot of negative stuff about it, honestly, more than uh, the past two seasons for sure. But I think uh, there's just been a big shift in, I don't know, people have always nitpicked Star Wars, but it seems like people are such film critics now, like more than ever, like everybody's talking about pacing and, you know, I guess I did that too, but, you know, the cinematography and the storytelling and the writing, and it's like, dude, just watch it and just have fun, but I don't know. I've been thoroughly enjoying it so far, and I hope you guys have been too, but before we get too deep into uh, Mando or The Bad Batch, there's about 104 people that I need to call out right now that said, The Last Jedi was bad. Um, (laughs) Instagram started this new feature. It's called Broadcast Channels, which it's pretty interesting. Honestly, I've been kind of trying to wrap my head around it the past few days. I don't think everybody has access to the feature yet, but um, it's basically a group message where your followers can join this, uh, this chain, and you are the only one who can say anything, so... In, in my broadcast, I'm the only one who can say anything. I can put out polls. I can put out messages. I can send links and send posts and that sort of thing. But nobody else can message back in it. Um, you know, your followers can only react with emojis, basically. And it's weird. <laughs> it feels like you're kind of talking to yourself, kind of like I'm doing right now, I guess. Maybe, uh, maybe it is sort of my forte, but... Um, it's interesting. Uh, so if you want to check that out, it is on my Instagram. There's a link on my bio. Um, you can join it and check it out if you want. Um, I haven't really, you know, posted too much or I don't really have too many ideas for it yet. I don't, I definitely don't want to just, you know, plug stuff in there like my podcast and other pages and that sort of thing. I want to make it entertaining, but it's, it's definitely odd. It, It feels like, your story is where you would kind of post stuff like that, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to join some other people's and see how they use it. But yeah, check mine out and come to my defense um, against the last Jedi haters. <laughs> nah, it's funny. You can put out polls on there, and uh, I just said, you know, the last Jedi is good or bad, and, you know, people chose. And it's about 50 50. There's 111 good and 104 bad votes. So. Uh, I guess it is as divisive as they say. No, but it's been fun. Um, Like I said, it's in my bio if you want to check that out. Um, Yeah, but back to kind of the the slander and the bad takes about The Mandalorian. I think it's mainly on Twitter where I've seen it, honestly. I don't know if Twitter is just uh, a bad place to get your sort of feedback from things. But um, I had a tweet, you know, go absolutely dummy viral did numbers. Um, (laughs) And honestly, I wish it didn't because I had to read so many terrible takes about the Mandalorian, at at least from my perspective. Like, I mean, people saying it's just a horrible show and that the writers have no idea what they're doing. And it was so much better before Grogu, which just makes absolutely no sense. I mean, there was one episode where there was no Grogu, you know, focus in a sense, and he was still at the end of it. And uh, I don't know, like I said last episode, I just feel like Mando and Grogu's relationship is the uh, is kind of the heart and soul of the show. So there are obviously some, you know, valid criticisms of it. I do think the discussion of whether or not Grogu should have returned in the Book of Boba Fett. I mean, I, I definitely agree with that 
you know, it, it d- diminishes what happened at the end of season two um, for it to be kind of shoehorned into Boba Fett, you know. However, you know, we can't really control that at this point. And if you're going to watch the show, you know, you're going to have to accept the fact that that's what happened and, um, you know, kind of look at the positives going forward because I love those episodes in the book of Boba Fett. I, I do agree that it would have been cool to see a little bit more of Din by himself and sort of the thought process that he was going through and what he, you know, wants to do in life without Grogu and maybe see Grogu train with Luke just a little bit more. But I think those episodes in Boba uh, serve their purpose and I love seeing Mando and Grogu together, so I'm not going to complain about that. And um, I think that's people's main criticism of it so far, which, you know, is valid. But then there's also a lot of just, I, I can't get behind the fact that the show is horrible and it's the worst thing that Star Wars has done. And that's what I'm seeing people say. And, you know, whether it's trolls or people are being serious, when you're getting that feedback, it's just kind of, it's it's tough to kind of just gloss over that and... Honestly, I got the the tweet that I'm specifically talking about had like over a million views and hundreds and hundreds of replies. And it was basically asking, what's your hot take about the Mandalorian? And so many people's hot take apparently is that it's garbage, which again, I can't get behind that because let's just talk about episode two, baby. Oh man, we had freaking Bo-Katan, we had Mando, we had Grogu, they were all absolute, I mean, Din was actually not killing it, he was being an absolute dummy, but honestly, that episode was a 10 out of 10 for me, probably top five Mando episodes, um, there was just so much lore from the Mandalorian aspect, and so much story development, honestly, like we usually don't get that much story development in one Mando episode. So I feel like uh, it's kind of opened the door in a lot of ways to where the story could go. And um, I mean, I'm just excited. Like when I watched that episode for the first time, there were so many points where I was like, you know, smiling, laughing, having so much fun watching it. And um, even on my second viewing, I thought it was even better, honestly. Um First of all, Bo-Katan, such a baddie. Like, she grabbed the Darksaber, started swinging it around effortlessly, and honestly, that completely changed <laughs> the way I looked at her character. The, the episode overall, but that scene was so sick. And, um, you know, we see Din use the Darksaber, and he just looks like a fool. And then Bo-Katan, you know, picks it up and slashes that spider thing uh, with ease and just looking like an absolute baddie. So I love that. And, um, you know, we see Din, he, he gets himself into some trouble. I mean, this man is not very good at, he must be only good at bounty hunting when he's just going after one dude, because without Grogu or without Bo-Katan, I mean, that dude would be dead by now for sure. But obviously, he's still awesome. I mean, I just love seeing him in his Starfighter. It was really cool to see him go back to Tatooine. Um, a lot of people say that Peli... Pelimoto is annoying, which honestly is what I thought at first too. But she's kind of just one of those characters kind of that is, you know, there for comic relief. And I think they do a really good job of making her fun and and incorporating some kooky bits of Tatooine into her aspect of the show. So I really don't have a problem with her at this point. I think her, you know, little thing with the Jawas is funny. And who doesn't love R5 as well? I mean... So cool that we're getting to see that droid mixed in with Mando and Grogu when he's one of the first droids that we ever see in Star Wars in A New Hope and is almost the R2-D2 of the saga when, you know, Owen Lars picks R5 instead of R2. But pretty cool to see, you know, the legend of R5 to come back around. And the little man Grogu in this episode, I mean, come on, man. He was so cute, and I mean, we finally actually got to see him go off on his own and do something, you know, he goes and uh, fetches Bo-Katan so that she can help Din, and I thought that was so adorable. I mean, he's like off on his own, scooting his little pram around, hops into the spaceship by himself and, and flies off. When he points the little screen to R5, my heart melted. I That's been stuck in my head all, all week, but... I don't know, I I do see people's, you know, like, if you don't like the cutesy stuff in Star Wars, which, 
Apparently, I do. I, I I've got a. I'm a sucker for it now. I, I can get why you know Grogu is is somewhat you know annoying or cringe to you, but I don't know. I he's little Yoda, and like he, we've never seen anything like that in Star Wars, and for him to, we're literally seeing him grow and. These little, it's literally like watching a baby, you know, form their their first steps and their first words and that sort of thing. Like, I just think that is so cool and something that we may never see in Star Wars. And, and honestly, we don't see anything like that across shows in general. Like, just this dynamic of some badass warrior and a little baby together. You just don't see that. I mean, I probably sound like a broken record at this point about Grogu, but... <laughs> I just love the little guy, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fight anybody who wants to bring him down. That's that's all I gotta say. I, I'm curious to know what you guys thought about the like the spider droid thing. I have some some theories on that guy. What is he doing there? Why is it you know destroying anybody that comes around? It's obviously like collecting like Mandalorian remains or maybe Mandos that have returned to try and see if Mandalore is, is still habitable, and then that thing kills him. I, I kind of think that thing was put there in place by the Empire. Um, it, it has this eyeball, and it's like watching, and it, I don't know, it gave me spy vibes. I don't know why. It wasn't just, like, how would that thing even be there if somebody didn't plant it there or, or, or you know, something to that degree? I think it has something to do with the Empire, and the Empire is going to find out that Bo and Din had been there and are back at, on Mandalore, and they're going to have to, you know, come in and uh, try and dispatch some forces to to stop them from coming back to Mandalore. I, I feel like that would be kind of a main goal for the Empire and the Mandalorians. I, I mean, I guess it's not the Empire at this point. It's, you know, the remnant of them, but I feel like that would be one of their main goals would be to, to not, you know, let Mandalore... Uh, become strong again because that'd be dangerous for them but who knows maybe at this point they're not tracking it as well but there has to be something more to that creature there I think uh it can't just be there for fun in a sense but who knows I I really love the whole minds of Mandalore thing (laughs) I don't know if you guys saw but IGN put out a review saying that uh they gave the episode a five out of ten which is just ridiculous Basically, for the lighting of the episode, saying it was too dark to even see in it, see anything. And, I mean, I don't agree with that. I I felt like I saw everything fine. Especially compared to some of the other things that um, have come out in Star Wars. Kenobi was really dark. There were some points, even with the lightsabers, where you couldn't see what was going on. And uh, I don't think this episode was that bad at all in that regard. But... Um, they basically just gave it a bad review for the for the lighting, which again I don't agree with. But I love that aspect. They're in a mine. I, I I don't see why there would be a lot of light. We got to see the ruins of the civic center, and that was that was awesome. I mean to see that in Clone Wars, you know, thriving and full of people, and then to see the ruins of it. I mean, that's pretty heavy stuff. And it's kind of one of those things when you think about people in the order that they watch Star Wars and they're introduced to Star Wars. If somebody's watching the Mandalorian as sort of their starting point for Star Wars, if they go back and watch the Clone Wars, it's going to be cool for them to see, you know, when it was thriving, that sort of thing. And I, I just love that aspect of Star Wars and the way the story can unfold for, for new fans. But uh, I mean, I, I don't want to rush into it, but holy crap, we saw the mythosaur. Um, I feel like this is going to be the overall point behind Bo-Katan and Din, you know, coming together and, you know, the resurrection of Mandalore. They've basically been saying that, you know, if you can control the, the Mythosaur, you know, you can bring back Mandalore. So I feel like Din will be the one to kind of rein in the, the Mythosaur. Or honestly, even Grogu will be a big part of that. We've seen his, like, affinity for creatures and... That thing is absolutely massive, so I really don't see how Din can do it by himself. But I think uh, Bo-Katan, well, she'll get her Darksaber back. I think they've made it evident that she kind of deserves it. Just in a, a one quick episode, I mean, Din has had some training at this point with it um, from the armorer, and he just still doesn't know how to use it. So I feel like Bo is deserving of it, and 
I feel like there's kind of a, a co um, leadership thing that's going to be going on if you know she has the dark saber, and then uh, Din tames the mythosaur. You know those those are the two tools you need to you know bring back Mandalore. So that's where I sort of see the season going. Is you know how can they reform Mandalore, and how can they get all the people, all the Mandalorians, back on the same page? You know to have a thriving civilization. And I, I'm trying to figure out where the hiccups could be in that. You know, how does the Imperial Remnant come into that? Where does Moff Gideon play? Um, it should be interesting. I've seen some theories that maybe Moff Gideon is actually a former Mandalorian and has some ties there, which I don't, you know, I don't buy into necessarily, but I think, you know, that would be pretty cool to see, you know, somebody throw the Mandalorian culture away for the Empire when... Uh, you know, the Empire has such a negative um, viewpoint of the Mandalorian. So, uh, yeah, I'd definitely be interested to see, you know, what you guys thought about it. Leave me a message. Uh, hit me up in the DMs. That's where it goes down. It's where we absolutely slander Grogu in the DMs. No. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm living right now. I, I feel like I'm just having a great time with Star Wars again. And honestly, <laughs> I called the last episode of Andor Slander, but Andor Slander. Uh, but I, I love Andor, and I, I thought it was a great show. It's just, again, like I said last time, it's not my favorite flavor of Star Wars, but that doesn't mean I didn't absolutely enjoy it. People like pin the shows against each other and say, because Andor was so good in in these ways, and Mando might not be as strong in these ways. Andor's better, or, you know, Andor has a much more critical uh, strength, I think, or merit in terms of, like, filmmaking, whereas The Mandalorian has a much stronger, like, storytelling uh, and adventure entertainment aspect to it, you know, and and I guess entertainment is subjective, but I don't know. I don't want to get too far into that, because I could go all day on that, but Andor good, Mando good, right? Also, Bad Batch good, because if you've been keeping up with a Bad Batch, if you haven't, first of all, you're missing out, because this show's awesome. Um, you know, last time I said it was it was doing its job, but honestly, this episode was was absolutely killer, and honestly, some of the heaviest stuff we, we've had to see in terms of, you know, the, the Imperial reign and the effects that it, it has on individuals. Because we see Crosshair, and, you know, he's still working for the Empire, obviously. But um, we see some heavy stuff going on and some evilness coming out of the Empire, which is awesome. Um, I, I don't want to go too far into the Bad Batch because I, I, I like to promote people to watch that <laughs> a little bit more than to, um, you know, hear my review of it. But honestly, it for an animated, I, I call it a kid show because it is, I feel like, at the heart. I mean, there is some deep, deep stuff. And if you are a Star Wars fan and you love the Empire and the Rebels and, you know, the clones, we're seeing an amazing story go down and seeing that uh, transition of the clones to the Empire. So, honestly, I give both of these episodes this week a 10 out of 10 because they were both fantastic. But, yeah, like I said, I'm living. I hope you guys are too, and I hope you're enjoying um, we've got a lot of stuff coming up this year and it's exciting. It can be overwhelming, but I feel like after Mando and Bad Batch, there's definitely going to be a solid, uh, break for us in terms of a new big project coming out. Ahsoka is set to release in the fall. Acolyte is set to release next year. We've got the, uh, Jedi Survivor video game coming out, I believe uh, at the end of April. Um, and you know, that, that'll be fun and obviously hold us over for a while. But honestly, I could use a break from, you know, the shows for, for a couple months. It, it'd be nice to let this, this new content digest, be able to rewatch it and not have to, you know, be right on to the next one. So obviously Star Wars Celebration is coming up too. Uh, I will not be going, which is a bummer, but it's in London. So we've got to let our, our, our British fans get it on because, you know, they don't really get it every year, so I've been watching a lot of Love Island, guys, so if I go into a little British accent, it is what it is, but 
uh, you know, we're in a villa and we're having fun and it's a cheeky vibe. We're just bantering. Honestly, I could do a podcast like this, mate. I mean, crazy. It, it, it really is. But nah, it, man, I wish I could go to Star Wars Celebration, but honestly, it wouldn't be worth me to fly across the world to go. So um, I'll probably be there next time, you know, whenever it comes back to the States. They said, I believe the next one will be in 2025. So I guess we will see. Uh, something exciting that I, I heard was um, Bob Iger, who is the CEO of Disney. I guess they, they showed him um, some clips of the Acolyte uh, series, and he said it looked awesome. So that's just kind of a cool tidbit. Um, and also, I think uh, there's a lot more information coming out about like the Mandoverse, quote-unquote, overall. And all these new shows sort of kind of intertwining um, in this time period of, you know, Mando and Boba Fett. They're all kind of intertwining to, you know, not create a cinematic universe. Obviously, Star Wars already is that. But I think to focus more on that time period and to give people, you know, these connected stories where Ahsoka is meshing with Mando, which is meshing with Boba, which, you know, which I honestly like. I, I really don't like the idea of, shows being spread around so much throughout the Skywalker saga timeline. I feel like it's very easy to get convoluted when, you know, there's so many plot points already set in stone, but then, you know, you add something in the middle. There's just no way it can't have some sort of repercussion, you know, to the story uh, going forward. So I think that's interesting. But so, yeah, guys, that is about it. I appreciate you listening to me ramble on. Um, no video portion this time. I, I, I'm working on getting that back up. We're, we're in the process of getting our house set up. We just moved not too long ago. So, uh, I don't want to rush it and, um, I don't want to rush guests on either. Um, but we'll get back into the groove of that. And, um, yeah, we will, uh, keep this thing rocking again. I appreciate you guys listening. Join my broadcast channel on Instagram. Uh, if you don't already follow me, it's officially Star Wars or Brody One Kenobi um, on YouTube. So, yeah, guys, appreciate it. Um, hope you guys have a great week and you enjoy Mando Episode 3, Bad Batch uh, Episode whatever it is, 14, 13. Uh, yeah, have a great week. May the Force be with you. Peace.